sorry. I actively pursue my career for advocating for peace and climate justice. And I'm here to um, share my experiences with you this afternoon. And I'm so happy to be involved. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sadie. Andrianos. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Marino, for the invitation. And of course, Cartet and PC for, for the support. And of course, everyone for being here. Thank you for your interest. Um, my name is Andrianos Jaralambus. I hold a Bachelor in Communications, a pre-master's in uh, intercultural and interreligious communications, and a master's degree uh, in uh, political science and international relations. That's where I met Marinos. <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, I've been a peace activist since 2004, since the day the, uh, the checkpoints opened, uh, because that was the first chance I ever got to be one. Uh, and I've also been an environmental activist, and I try, uh, and I try to combine uh, the two of those, um, as Evgenia does, and I hope more, <laughs> more people do. Um, I'm looking forward to my PhD, which will have to do with soft power and conflict resolution in small states, in small European states uh, and uh, the um, uh, Mediterranean area. Um, and looking forward to the rest of the discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Andriane, and good luck with, you, with your PhD. Kulusi, last but not least, of course. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much again, Marinos, for organizing this and the support of UFICIP and everybody's interest. Uh, I am Polusi Kilim, uh, Famagustian, uh, as a proud Famagustian and half Pafidis, I would say. <laughs> I will never reject my uh, Pafos roots. Uh, I am now uh, back in Cyprus after uh, education in the, in the UK in business administration and supply chain logistics master's. Um, over these years, I have been working in marketing, um, in the healthcare industry, um, and now back in Cyprus doing my family business. Uh, over the years, like Andriano said, I have been throughout my whole adult life, I would say, and earlier on, uh, took part in the efforts of um, bringing people together and bridging the gap. That That is um, the gap between the two communities and all the people um, that have uh, had the knock-on effects of the division. And I found my own way of doing it through language and um, expressing the my opinions and expressing the other, everyone else's opinions to the others who do not understand their language um, and find to find the middle ground. Um, have been educated also in critical mass leadership. Uh, have been educated in a, um, also conflict resolution, just like Shadi Chalier. And I believe moving forward, uh, the discussion, we will have the chance to discuss this more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Policy. Looking forward for your great experience in, in, uh, in the field. And allow me, as I said before, this event is supported by UNFISIP, and this is not the first time. Um, I, I would like to, to pass the floor for, for one minute to, uh, to, to UNFISIP. Um, I saw that we have uh, some colleagues uh, from UNFISIP that they're supporting the event and in general the Emerge project. So we have with us uh, Marina Vasilara. So Marina, um, we would be more than happy to have all, um, you know some remarks on your side of what you are doing in the uh, in the field. And thank you again um, for supporting the Emerge project. Thank you, Marinos. And uh, sorry for the background noise of my dog. Um, I uh, would like to uh, thank Cardet and thank you for um, for arranging this uh, the, uh, this panel discussion. Um, I just uh, wanted to say that for those of you who are not aware, Unfisi uh, has been working on trust building activities um, for the last uh, ten years or so uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we're uh, focusing mostly on the youth peace and security agenda and the women peace and security agenda, as well as climate change, environmental peace building, and also um, innovation and technology. So we um, we mainstream youth and women through throughout the activities we do, 
uh, with a particular focus uh, on uh, climate change as well as uh, technology innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, but yes, we are uh, open to ideas and uh, welcome to new collaborations between organizations, between individuals. We work with academics, with organizations, with individuals that we want to support trust building efforts. So if any of you have um, you know, any ideas you would like to discuss, um, I know uh, my colleagues, uh, I think uh, Mustafa and Maria are also on this call and you know, would be happy, uh, Marinos can put us in touch and would be happy to um, explore further opportunities with you. Um, and now back to Marinos, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marina. Also, hello to Mustafa and uh, and Maria from from on, on Fisip. Um, just a comment, guys. If you have any other ideas um, uh, in, in the peace building, but also in the other um, uh, topics that Marina uh, mentioned, feel free to contact with them. They're very very open um, for collaborations, for synergy. So uh, feel free on this. Um, so um, thank you again, our speakers, for their brief introduction. Um, as we proceed, I would like to outline the structure of today's uh, we webinar. We will engage in an approximately 40-minute uh, discussion with some uh, questions to our speakers. And following this, we will open the floor for approximately 15 to 20 minutes for comments, questions uh, from our audience. Uh, th this is the opportunity uh, for the audience, for you to share your insights uh, or to seek answers uh, from our um, from our panel. Feel free uh, during also the discussion uh, to share any comments or to share your questions through the chat. Uh, this will help us um, uh, to transfer the questions to our speakers. Um, also, in the Q and A section, you can open your microphones, and of course. Uh, we're more than happy to have uh, your opinion on the topics uh, of the of the webinar. So let's begin our discussion. Um, so guys, we're talking about uh, peace building. Uh, in a lot of cases, we're underlying and and focus on, on the role of of, of civil society. Uh, we know, and you will tell us about some success stories. Uh, of of active of the role of active civil society in the peace building processes, but before we go there, um, as as activists uh, in the field, uh, the, and this is a, a common question for all of you, um, we want to know what, what are the major challenges uh, that are faced by the civil society organization in Cyprus in the relation to the peace building initiatives, and of course, uh, during the discussion, uh, we want to have from you some, some solutions, some suggested solutions uh, that either have been implemented or uh, you're suggesting to be implemented in order to overcome these challenges. Um, I, I will pass the floor um, to Sadia for, uh, uh, for, for the, this first question, and then um, we, we're going to have the, um, the opinion of the rest of the speakers. So Sadia, what are the challenges? Uh, that the civil society faces in the peace building process? Um, so what I would say so is that uh, one of the major challenges is that to be able to approach to the new generation um, so that we do understand the actual needs of the individuals whom are going to, or actually right now, playing a significant role while... Um, going through this uh, post-conflict uh, condition in the, in the daily life. And um, many civil organizations, by using uh, social media platforms, understanding the, the needs of youth, are approaching uh, to, to many generations much more than before. So I will say so that we are at a, at a much better condition right now compared to a few years back by establishing the ground and starting to understand the youth on the ground with uh, initiations and cooperations with the institutions and the organizations available, starting from UNFISIP, starting from um, like CARDET, the Emerge Project, 
which I believe that taking an action towards civic engagement is one of the um, realizations that we understand that taking an action and having a say on a topic will involve us in the process of engaging more with the other side of the uh, community. And I believe that um, we, like, we have started to tackle our challenges and while coming to the solution, this is kind of a, a rocky road and solutions are always discovered while we are going through it. So I believe that um, we are on the go and um, I believe Evgenia can tell us also what she thinks about it because she's very much in the field too. Please, Evgenia. <laughs> I'm sorry to start with a more pessimistic note. I'm not uh, that uh, of a pessimist, but indeed there are a lot of barriers. Um, there might be personal, financial, logistical, psychological. There are many barriers into this process. Uh, one example I can share in, in terms of financial barriers uh, with Shadier. Shadier recently participated in COI 18, which is an international climate youth event in uh, the context of uh, COP conferences. And um, it was um, like the, the barriers were many, first of all, because we are young people that not many people know. <laughs> uh, secondly, it's an inter it was an intercommunal effort. So not everyone is supportive of intercommunal actions across the islands. And uh, thirdly, there was like a travel involved with a lot of logistical difficulties. So um, we were trying to find funding in order for um, uh, young people from our initiative to attend this international conference. And we either didn't get any response or had like a negative um, answer. So like one solution we found um, First of all, I think our networks were really important. The UN in Cyprus was really um, helpful in providing us with contact details of um, persons and institutions that might be willing to support us. And also we faced the other added barrier of language. For example, there were um, institutions um, and bodies such as the Youth Board of Cyprus, who is funding young people. And Turkish Cypriots are eligible, for example, to, to apply for funding. However, the application form was only available in Greek. So we had to join our forces in a way. So I was assisting with the language and Shadia was assisting with uh, her knowledge of drafting financial letters. And so, I mean, that's, that's the solution. We need to combine our pow powers and knowledge. And I think when there is a will, there is a way, as cliche as that might sound. And I would like to add to Evgenia that um, the challenge that we faced uh, while going to Koi, for me and for another Turkey Cypriot partner of us, um, once you find yourself in a very hopeless condition because you won't know where the way out is, although once you have partners in the same um, loop with you who is aiming for for, for the um, similar goal uh, with Evgenia, that we, we achieved to reach out to, to the youth board of Cyprus and uh, we could um, in a nice way deliver our complaint to them related to the language. And now there is this awareness raised in their platform, which we are uh, in on the path to, 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 to make sure that the Turkish or at least English alteration of the form is available for, for people eligible for the opportunities. So this is one of the challenge and we actually um, solved it in, in somehow uh, and uh, hoping to make the process easier for others. Thank you very much, Evgenia and, 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 and Sarige. I mean, these are very important points that you raised. And the good thing is that you have already have the solutions, uh, which, is, <laughs> uh, which is very good on this. Um, um, the, the same question uh, applies also uh, to Hulusi about the challenges that the, um, the, the civil society organization face in the field of peace building and in general the, the active civil society. Beyond the Hulusi, beyond the practical um, um, challenges that Evgenia Sarie mentioned, uh, what about the 
um, the societal challenges? Uh, I mean, are there any challenges that are posed by the society in terms of the peace building process? Um, I could add and say that there is a bubble, Nicosia bubble, in all these efforts. Um, I am from Famagusta. Uh, Famagusta is also an exception to this. Uh, a lot of effort is being done and it is taking place around Nicosia. And it appears that um, the, uh, the problem is not perceived by those part of the, the part of the country, for example, Nemaso, Paphos or Kairinia, as much as it is perceived by Nicosia and Pamphamagusta, which are on the border, on the on the on the green line. So that's a that's a problem that we need to come across. And that's a problem that we need to uh, try and find ways to engage people in a further way from Nicosia so that um the it the message goes across further. Um that's one problem. Uh as I said, Famagusta is a good example here. Uh, we have got a lot of engagement by the people of Famagusta with Derinya and um, all Famagustians who don't live in Famagusta. I can tell you, like, uh, put it that way. And But I also don't believe um, the, the problems that we have are not stemming necessarily from things that we control ourselves. There's a constantly changing uh, challenges uh, brought to brought in front of the uh, civil society organizations by the politics uh, that that are put in front of us constantly as challenges uh, in terms of communication, in terms of travel. Um, in, uh, in so that you there's always something that uh, is changing the rules of the game. So that's another uh, aspect that we that we can discuss. Uh, so. I will keep it like at this at this stage here. So leave, give give some chance to also to Andrianos to add. That yes, in, in, indeed, you raise very very good points, especially the one with the political situation and how uh, change um, the dynamic uh, of the of the civil society in order to contribute toward the peace building. Uh, Andrianos, I know that you are a communication uh, expert. Um, so my, my question will focus on, on the communication aspect. So um, is the communication aspect important uh, and maybe is it a challenge uh, that affects the peace building process and the role of, uh, of civil society? Well, communication is definitely an issue because if, if, we, if we need as we do need to, to solve an issue, we need to communicate in order to solve it. And uh, the prevention of communication between the communities in several ways uh, have been mentioned, mentioned before from my peers. Um, it, it is uh, the main obstacle for me uh, in the process of uh, uh, solving the issue. Uh, that comes from uh, the media, the vocabulary and the literature that is used in the media. Um, I can speak uh, I can definitely speak for the South. That happens in the North. I'm aware of that as well. But I, I have the feeling or, and I have the information to say that it happens more in the South rather than uh, in the North. Um, uh, this is something that we cannot change in the, at the moment. There have been different efforts uh, for this to change. The infamous uh, glossary. Uh, that was uh, tried to be introduced uh, at some point, which was uh, heavily um, argued upon negatively. Uh, and of course, it, it was not ever implemented. Uh, and of, also the communication is disrupted through education. Uh, and it, this is uh, something that comes into in uh, nationalistic terms and uh, in terms that don't help uh, the communities to come together, especially uh, the youth. Uh, and as as the generations are changing, as the generations do not have the information, or do not have the experience uh, of uh, how Cypriot used to live, how our society uh, was structured, it's really hard to, to tell things apart. So the, the education is the only tool they have to know uh, what we have in front of us. And solutions, Brio has been doing an amazing work uh, in uh, um, educating people, in bringing history, real history forward, uh, and 
so in the youth sector, the histories of Bakshes is is a great initiative uh, that is coming from the youth for the youth uh, to give this information and definitely uh, more other initiatives uh, out there. Um, I would add, uh, I, I will be fast <laughs> uh, to add that uh, the, the other main issues that can be societal, uh, societal that we face is the everyday life. Uh, being a young person today is not easy. Uh, and we have many challenges to face. And the priorities we put today, they are different. I know myself uh, when I was a teenager and I was when I was 20 years old, I would find a part-time job and I would make ends meet and I would be happy with my life. Uh, I could have my car and I could rent my place and I, I could even study uh, with a part-time job. Now I work two full-time jobs and I cannot make ends meet. So the priorities change uh, and that applies to everyone. And again, the challenges are even uh, more apparent in the North rather than the South. I You're that. absolutely right. Yeah, yes, please, Flushi. So like uh, Andrea said, economical condi conditions uh, may push people to put their priorities in a different order but at the same time it's a it's 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 a rather uh, vicious circle that we end up in because especially for Turkish Cypriot community the problems that um, Turkish Cypriots are facing today yes there is a lot of economical problems uh, and societal problems and uh, many different uh, problems yet um, you can trace the problems back to the root, which is the Cyprus problem. So if we do not solve the Cyprus problem, these problems will keep. So we are dealing, we are having to deal with symptoms of the Cyprus problem, yet we, we are not able to get to the bottom of the problem, which is our core issue. So this is what I wanted to add. Um, on, 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 on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kolosi. Uh, um, um, thank you. Um all of the speakers um, um, for this first question. Um, I noted here the political situation, um, the role of media, communication, um, language barriers, financial barriers, the everyday life priorities, uh, as was mentioned by Andrianos, uh, as some of the challenges that uh, we're facing as, as, a, as a, a society uh, and maybe prevent us um, to Get, get more involved more actively in the peace building process i mean uh, I, I think it's 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 very good that we're doing this kind of discussion since we have to be honest with ourselves of, of what prevent us in order to find a solution uh we have to identify the challenges in order to find also solutions um now going um back to hulusin uh and and of course this is a joke that we had previously. Uh, I don't want to reveal uh, um, his age uh, with this uh, question. Uh, <laughs> and of course, I'm, I'm joking. I was joking with uh, Hulusi. So the question is the following. Um, Hulusi, I know that um, you experience the transition period uh, let's call it, uh, of the peace building process in Cyprus. Uh, so my question is uh, how the, the historical context of conflict in Cyprus shape our approach or the approach of civil society organization towards the reconciliation efforts. And at this point, I want to emphasize uh, uh, on, on, on 2003 and the opening of the, um, um, of the checkpoints, I think that was a milestone in the peace building process. So um, uh, we need your experience uh, on this and please let us know how the peace building process uh, change, if it changed towards all of these years. Okay, so I just found myself in a position where um, I, I thought it was still far away because um, we are looking back in history and the problems are still remaining and we were looking up to our elderly who lived through troubles and yet they couldn't have the time to solve the problem and they are transferring now the problem to us and now we have experience also in a divided country for now over 20 years. Anyway, we're moving on. 
So back in 2003, when the borders were opened, um, we were people were starting to actually meet each other face to face after all these years of no communication whatsoever. Uh, what I experienced as a youth back then, I was 14. I'm going to give give it up, no problem. I don't mind. Uh, and first experience I had was with youth encounters for peace. So there were groups of kids going to these uh, two-day weekend events where there were different activities such as um, history walks, such as um, doing some creative work together and actually having the chance to um, just interact uh, with the other uh, people from the other community. So over the, that at that part at that time it was more basic core uh, core issues that were addressed. So because over the years education system has met, has meant that the way it's been formulated, it injected a lot of misinformation, a lot of or none no information uh, to the uh, knowledge of the youth which meant that we had this hurdle to cross. So over the, over the period, this political system has never helped the reconciliation process. I need to emphasize this. I can't emphasize it enough. So we were only put forward uh, struggles and blockades throughout this uh, process. So 2003 comes, all of a sudden we have the checkpoints opening. And all of this taboo that we grew up in suddenly hits us in the face. All of the uh, all of the messages and the stories that we grew up with from by our parents, uh, we go and see it in person, right? And all of a sudden, a wall comes down. We we face the reality and also the also the um, lies. So it's a lot to take in, a lot to manage. And what happened is that. With this 2003 onwards, we had to put the things in an order. So civil society had to actually um, put, uh, be, be uh, act in a way that actually uh, that had to do a lot of cleaning cleaning work. So, but with the youth, we had to come together, like I said, do history walks and identify what what we don't know. We don't know. What we know, we don't know, and what we know is, and it's wrong, and uh, so a lot of that had to be done. So, and over the years, people started to meet now at individual level, and mingle around. 20, for now, twenty years, the crossings have been opened. A lot of work has been done by the grassroots and the civil society. That meant that. Um, the mass, the critical mass, as I mentioned before, has grown and and it's an exponential growth. So when you meet one person and that person brings another friend around and that, that those people bring two people around. So this this message uh, is actually shared uh, this way and it grows exponentially. So what what the historical context of the conflict meant for the civil society is that because we do not speak the language, it meant that we had to translate our poems so that we understand that our hopes are the same, our pain is the same, uh, and our, our music is the same. So we bring together people and created choirs. We, we brought the poets together. We, uh, so all the, all the people from from the, the perspective of looking at Cyprus problem, the civil society started to look at individual interest areas and move in those directions so that we have a common ground to talk about. Because after a few after a, um, a few years, I would say, uh, talking through the same things uh, meant that we are not getting anywhere. And political changes, uh, political problems, um, difficulties that got put in one side changing the leader and then after other other side changing the leader and the negotiation process not moving forward things have things have been stand on as, at a standstill for polit uh, on the political front so people had to move on and thank god that civil society moved on and kept the hope alive 
So, uh, and then we are here after 20 years, uh, we still have a lot to do and we still have a lot to talk about. Uh, and so this is how the process evolved. Uh, I would say um, language comes across as also Evgenia highlighted as one of the key issues here. And uh, we will talk about it later, I believe, but uh, think about the fact that over 30 years, this the people of Cyprus has not had the chance to communicate. There has been grudges been built in, there has been taboos built in. Um, and when you cannot communicate, you cannot express yourself and you shut down um, your opinion about everything else and you just do get on with your daily life. And all of a sudden the crossing is open and you're like, hello. And oh yes, you just start remembering. So, um, but you cannot still ex express yourself. And so I believe language is a key in the creation of the problem and sus sustaining, sustain, how to say, the <laughs> sustain, it has been sustained also. The it, language barrier acts as a sustaining factor for the Cyprus problem uh, in itself. So we need to work on understanding each other. We need to work, create space so that we can actually um, be free to talk, be free to um, ask questions, ask the, any question uh, so that you can get rid of the worries, the concerns that you have um, and create the right and safe spaces for everyone to get together. And it does not need to be visible because now, because of the mass uh, growing and there are a lot of opportunities where people can come together and the level of relationships between the communities has gone to very personal. This is what we need to focus on and keep the per keep it at personal level. This the grassroots movements and civil societies be, uh, act, action as well, so that people can really deep get to experience really deeply the personal experience um, and communication of uh, with mm -hmm. the people. This is um, how I would say historically things have evolved from basic understandings, core issues, um, getting the base big facts right. And now we are now at a more personal level um, after 20 years of work. So there's so much work done. Thank you very much, um, Lucy, for your comments. Uh, in, 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 the same, uh, uh, in the same vein, um, Andriane, comparing with the past and, 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 and the present peace building efforts, uh, what si significant changes or maybe improvements have you observed uh, in relation to the strategies that are adopted by the civil society organization in the peace building process? Well, being at the same young age as Hulusi, uh, I had the opportunity to experience myself uh, the opening of the checkpoints back in 2003. Uh, so I've been tracking, I've been, I've been participating in the network since then. Uh, I was 13 back then. Uh, so I, I will, I will begin with something very personal, uh, a fun story with my father. In 2002, uh, someone called him and he said, uh, you have to come to my village. There is a Turkey Cypriot stereotype, asterisk stereotype. There is a Turkey Cypriot here that can tell uh, your destiny. Uh, from your coffee cup and you should come because she's great uh, but you should ask her only one thing and he went uh, and the only thing he had to ask was uh, if and when is the Cypriot problem going to be solved uh, and he came at home and he gathered everyone in the kitchen we sat around the table and he said I have something very important to tell you I did this and that and I was like I was 13 I was, I was 12 and I was like Come on, that you cannot believe that stuff. <laughs> and he said, she told me that next year the problem is going to be solved. And next year the checkpoints opened. Now, now no one expected that to happen. We we did follow the process, but it was not likely to see that happening anytime soon. Uh, and of course, if we go back to 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 that time, uh, we will remember or we will see. Uh, that it was not the same approach from both both sides. Uh, anyways, 
if this happened and my father comes and says, see, I told you so. <laughs> uh, and there is an outburst of hope. Uh, everyone, uh, everyone was thinking that this is it. Like in a few months, the discussions will continue. We're going to see the T's and that uh, in the discussions and uh, the Cypriot issue would be uh, passed. And things started to happen. And there, there was a by communal huge concert in Nicosia, in the villa, uh, organized uh, by the left movements. Uh, and my father and my then my, uh, my whole family was there and my father helped me on his shoulders and he said, look around you, you're witnessing history. Forget about the Cyprus problem, you will not see that again, but we have to always remember. Because everyone thought that that was finished. And for a few months, this was going on, like that was the outburst of hope and we were going towards the Anand plan and everyone was saying, okay, it's happening. And then uh, everyone expected the, the two big parties to support uh, the Anand plan. This did not, uh, did not happen. Let's not talk about that. But this hope collapsed from both sides. Uh, everyone in the South that wanted that to pass was knew that that moment was our uh, biggest opportunity. And everyone in the North that wanted this to pass was absolutely devastated that we did not allow it to pass. So we went, we were running forward and suddenly we stopped and we were moving backwards in, in the same pace. It seemed like it was in the same pace. Uh, and that, I guess, that, that's when I, we started limping forward because the hope was still there. We, we knew that there is, if we lost hope, we wouldn't change anything. So the initiatives started uh, regenerating uh, and we have initiatives that started back then like um, United Cyprus Now and other initiatives that uh, started to nestle at the time. Uh, and they were massive. Uh, people were going out, doing protests, coming together, having discussions, uh, like building the foundations to the civil society that would push uh, the lever towards to, for the stakeholders to move forward uh, for peace. And then um, that was coming very much from the older uh, generations, the ones that lived uh, through the conflict, uh, the active conflict, and uh, through the times that society was uh, connected and people lived together. Uh, and the younger generations, we we were trying to learn from them. Uh, we were taking uh, the incentives from their actions uh, and we were trying to build our own initiatives on the side. Uh, and, but this was slow. Um, mm. I, I, I really have the feeling, we've mentioned that the, uh, the checkpoints have been open for 20 years. Uh, we haven't done enough. We've been slow. And of course, uh, the negativity that was built after the rejection of the Anand plan was a major factor that uh, slowed down the process. Uh, and then other opportunities came up uh, and things slowed down and things slowed down again and again. Uh, and we find ourselves having some best of hopes in between. And we come to today uh, where we see that those massive movements have ceased, not completely, but in a uh, in a very significant way. Uh, and we see that the younger generations are the ones that are stepping forward, and they are stepping forward in a much different way. Uh, because our generations have studied abroad, and we have and we have internet, so we can educate ourselves and we organize ourselves in different ways. Um, the the initiatives that are uh, being uh, that are getting forward, that are being implemented, they are more about networking, uh, more about co-living, understanding, uh, being co-educated, uh, and uh, using using our networks, building strong foundations in order to go forward with advocacy. Um, and as as we've discussed, I will close with this note. As we've discussed earlier. Um, since I've been 
uh, active since I was 13. Now I'm 33, 20 years later. I find myself a peace activist that um, I, ha I have done a deep dive in the network. Uh, many people know me as a peace activist. So when Hade was uh, being formated, uh, which is one, I believe, of the bigger networks right now in the in the youth uh, peace building movement, um, I was called by uh, three friends, yeah, much younger friends, uh, to help them grow the network, uh, help them push the uh, pull the foundations for that network. Uh, and I'm very proud to have co-founded Hade. Uh, this doesn't really mean anything, but it was it was a fun ride. Um, I saw the movement uh, becoming bigger. Like I had the idea that we should create videos in order to say what the young people believe about the Cypriot issue and how it has been developed and how we should move forward. Uh, and we that we have to run again. We shouldn't slow down. Uh, we have to face it, we have to talk about it, and we should move forward. Uh, and I saw the network going backwards, becoming introvert, and I panicked. But then I realized that the younger generation has a different way to communicate. That in, uh, in a way that they will come together and talk to each other and really connect, really bond with each other, the foundation is so much stronger rather than sitting in front and saying, let's do that and go forward. It's much, much more important to really bond because these are the strong foundations in order to solve the issue, especially for the generations that didn't have the experience of the co-living. Thank you, Andriane. Um, I think that you touch also on the next question, uh, which is for, uh, for the youngest um, part of our speakers to Evgenia and to, and to Sadie about the, um, the strategies. I mean, how young people are being engaged in the peace building initiatives in, in Cyprus right now. Uh, so please inform us. I mean, Adriano has already mentioned the role of internet, uh, advocacy, networking. Um, please let us know um, what strategies are you using? Let's start with Evgeny, and of course, Sadie can can also jump to the discussion and add. Yes, to add on um, the cross points, uh, given that it has been mentioned. So when the cross points opened, I was five. And I remember that I got my first tooth uh, off in Kyrenia, which is my mom's village. So that's my memory from the opening of the cross points. But when you put that into perspective, it's been 20 years and right after the opening of the cross points, we had the Anand plan. But I think 20 years after, we can see like the role of the civil society in what Andrianos was mentioning of having and deep connections with one another. And um, for me, because uh, we've heard both the term peace and reconciliation, I try to um, differentiate between the two as two different pillars of, let's say, a process of transitional justice or like post-conflict um, aspects. So for me, reconciliation relates more to the um, societal and psychological elements of the conflict. And there are numerous activities that have also been mentioned, such as history works, language uh, workshops. There are many examples. Um, I'm glad Andrian has mentioned Hade. I took part in some uh, Turkish classes through Hade, which I'm very grateful. So a lot of the barriers that we have been discussing um, are uh, addressed by this um, uh, reconciliation uh, activities that are happening by not only young people, but in general peace activists in Cyprus. And um, for me, when I think of peace, uh, which is separate in my mind from reconciliation, I usually think of it as a structure um, or different structures or different tracks. And it's interesting, I think, to observe how civil society this past, let's say, 20 years at least, has interacted with the peace structures in terms of the negotiations and, and the tracks within uh, the diplomatic efforts um, to resolve the Cyprus problem. 
Um, I, I mean, through my experience in, in ELCO in Cyprus, uh, again, the Intercommunal Environmental Initiative, we have been trying to think how we can create structures for young people across the whole of the island to participate. And we utilized this international climate network to establish something in, in Cyprus that it is, of course, intercommunal. But what we try to do is not try to avoid all the jargon and that, that is around the negotiations and trying to normalize working together without labeling ourselves as, oh, this Turkish Cypriot participated and this Greek Cypriot and one Armenian and one Latin. We try to normalize working together. And at the same time, um, we have some output documents that are essentially policy proposals. And we've been advocating for different um, policies, some including greater youth participation within existing technical committees. Technical committees are, are part of the different tracks of the peace process within um, the Cyprus settlement process. So for us, that's a way of how we can have youth within the structures. And another um, suggestion that we had was uh, the possible establishment of uh, a technical committee on youth, for example, which is a new structure. Um, but um, we know, we try to educate, first of all, ourselves. We know that her, there have been numerous Security Council resolutions, such as on youth peace and security. There have been um, papers specifically on Cyprus from the Secretary General calling on the leaders to involve women, in, involve the civil society, involve young people. And um, I, I think the impact is there. I mean, it might not be easy to measure in terms of numbers, but I want to be optimistic that the past 20 years, the civil society has done um, like a crucial job when it comes to connecting with the diplomatic level and then negotiations level. And of course, there's always room like to, to have more involvement. And I mean, it's um, it, it depends on, on us, like to try to influence as many people as possible to join us in these efforts. That's yes. Funny. And uh, I would like to add on uh, while Evgenia is talking about the structures. Um, I believe that um, for the structure to function well, we need to know how to empower the youth voices and encouraging youth participation in peace building di dialogues requires a thoughtful and inclusive approach. And I believe that there are some effective strategies to achieve that. And to talk through, I believe that education and awareness is one of them because uh, raising awareness about the importance of peace building among youth through educational programs, workshops and campaigns plays a vital role and providing in information about the consequences of conflict and positive impact of peace on communities plays a very important role because uh, making youth comfortable with the idea so that they can create a space for the peace in Cyprus is where we establish while educating and creating awareness. And for another topic is, I believe, is the youth empowerment and empowering a young generation by involving them in decision-making processes, providing them opportunities to take leadership roles in peace initiatives or any other NGOs that they are thriving for creating platforms for them to express their ideas, concerns, and solutions related to the peace building efforts. And what we, we may miss um, sometimes is the cultural sensitivity and recognizing and respecting the diverse cultural backgrounds, like ensuring that NGOs, initiatives, and peace building focused organizations are inclusive and sensitive to the unique perspective and experiences of different youth groups are very important now to make and all of us understood in the process. Um, I believe that um, leveraging technology and social media platforms to reach a wider audience plays an important role and creating online spaces where younger people can discuss, share ideas and collaborate, collaborate on peace themes will 
will will help through the structuring while we are dealing with the peace context itself. Um, I believe like living in the north, um, we are lacking a youth friendly spaces where establishing physical or virtual spaces that are comfortable and welcoming, welcoming us to collaborate are lacking. And it would be great that um, we have hubs for dialogue, creativity and collaboration towards peace building efforts. Um, while I was living abroad, I had the opportunity to take part in mentorship programs. And I believe that pairing young people with experienced mentors who can guide and support them in their involvement in peace building activities are very important. And such as uh, I am currently taking part in Peace Ambassadors program from Association of Historical Dialogue and Research. And on the other hand, there was this Startups for Peace Innovation Bootcamp completed by Innovation Innovative Entrepreneurship Project where we were bringing um, both of the communities for a startup idea and establishing their, their, their idea into validation and working together on a business setting. Um, and also, I believe um, inclusive dialogue formats are really important to engage and make, make um, accessible to youth using interactive methods, role playing, creating activities to make the process more appealing to open up and create conversations based on commonalities is um, a, a, a commonality, a point that will meet us and click us for, for, for better friendships. Um, I believe also like recogni recognition and rewards are um, really important for personal growth and recognizing and celebrating the contribution of peace builders plays a significant role keeping the morals high and highlighting success stories to inspire others and show that their, their efforts are valued, must not be forgotten. For instance, UN youth champions are, UN youth champions are highlighted in multi-city action exhibitions starting from Letra Palace to New York, which has affected a lot of us's morals and kept our hopes high to keep going to our journey. And I believe that also policy advocacy is very important because encouraging youth to engage in policy advocacy related to peace and conflict resolution is um, helping to keep youth engaged in the process and providing training on effective advocacy strategies and connecting them to re relevant decision makers makes Makes, makes us to understand how much involved we are and it is actually a tangible topic than something imaginary. Uh, directing, the, directing them to peace summits and providing them opportunities to learn and interact from the other conflicting societies um, drives through very transformative engagement for youth. And last but not least, I would like to stand the importance of exchange programs. And I believe that facilitating exchange programs that allow youth, that allow young people from different regions and backgrounds to interact, learn from each other and collaborate on peace initiatives is um, very um, inclusive to the process. So overall, I would like to say that I strongly believe that by combining these strategies, Communities and organizations can create an environment that encourages and supports youth participation in peace building practices. And I'm so happy to be involved in such practices that are actually applied in Cyprus context. And compared to before, we are way ahead and it's really um, hopeful for us to keep going with, with the organizations available around us. Thank you very much, uh, Sariyem. Um, I saw that we ran out of time, so I think it's time to leave some space also to the to the audience in case that they have any comments, uh, any questions that they want to share with our speakers. This is your time. Uh, please, either you can open your microphone or you can uh, share your comment or question in the chat. Feel free. In the meantime, uh, as soon as we we have some questions, can we have uh, any questions? Um, I, I want to 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 ask uh, from all of you guys um, um, to share some success stories of 
uh, of the um, uh, successful involvement of the um, uh, civil society in the peace building process. This is something that Sadiq mentioned. Uh, we have to share the success stories, of course. Uh, we have to uh, uh, not overlook the challenges. That's why we started with the challenges at the beginning. But um, of course, at the end, we want to uh, to give a very a, a positive message um, from this webinar. So there are, of course, the success stories um, beyond the challenges. So uh, please feel free to share some uh, stories that you have. Let's keep it short. So please have one, uh, two minutes. I know it's difficult, but let's uh, try to keep it one or two minutes uh, per speaker. Um, so I, I will start now with Andrianos. Andriane, any any success story of uh, either personal, either um, either any other success story that you um, uh, that that you have. Yeah, I would I would first add to what Shadi said, something that I was thinking, but I've been thinking for a lot of years. Uh, what if we built more uh, statues for uh, peace ch champions rather than the people who disturbed peace? Um, just just a note out there. Uh, well, uh, success stories. We we've, we've had many. Uh, the 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 issue that these that I believe that United Cyprus now was a, a huge. Uh, success story, even though it's not that active anymore, uh, it it has been it has been uh, the foundation for for the civil society to build up in in different ways. Um, it, it has been the motherboard <laughs> for everything that developed uh, later. Um, success story as a success story, I would count also the meetup that um, twenty or thirty. Um, Maybe older uh, Cypriots have every Saturday morning in uh, in Buyuk Khan, and everyone is um, invited to to join this Saturday as well. Uh, I will be joining. Uh, it's an amazing experience since we have to learn from uh, the the older generations, and we have to take example, as also Shadi mentioned earlier. Um, but I would I would put forward. Hade, uh, for me, it's a, it is also a success story. Um, it's doing a lot of diverse, um, it's taking a lot of diverse initiatives uh, and it's getting people in, in, from, in different ways. Uh, and I will, uh, I will count the Cyprus coastline hikers. Uh, we, we together uh, in a team of 12 Cypriots, young Cypriots, we hiked around the island uh, during the uh, Trans Montana discussions in order to send the message. Uh, and I believe we did, but yes, it, let's say it was not taken by <laughs> the, uh, the stakeholders. And the winds of change as well, uh, which we managed, uh, for me, the greatest thing that we managed to uh, to achieve with the winds of change is that we broke a barrier that everyone thought it was there, but there was not. It was not. Uh, and this has to apply to any other barrier we think is there, and to any other ba uh, uh, barrier we think we cannot break. Thank you very much, Andriane, and thank you for the positive message uh, that you have sent. Um, um, Hulusi? Any, I, I know that you have a lot of success stories. Please, uh, let's focus on uh, on the most important. <laughs> I don't have. Um, it's our people. It's who has who has created um, success. I will. I'll give you an example of Famagusta um, very briefly. Famagusta Initiative and the bicommunal Famagusta Initiative that I am a founding member of. Uh, well, we we went to the streets and we. Uh, protested, we demanded the opening of the Irinia crossing and we managed it. We we constantly kept the spike up and we can, we, this shows we can um, pass the message to politics, pass the message outwards to actually express collectively what uh, we want. That's when we have success. Um, I want, I don't want to line uh, list of uh, different um, stories uh, initiatives but the main message here should be 
collectively we can. Uh, when we put our minds together, Greek Cyprus, Turkish Cyprus, all the people of Cyprus, and uh, meet at the common goal, that's when we we are pow so powerful, very very powerful. There's uh, there's not because nobody else can say no. Nobody else can say you cannot have it, you cannot do it because when we collectively put it together and say this is what we want, there's uh, there's there's no room for discussion. And this is what we achieved in Famagusta through the um, crossing opening, um, through uh, the approachment and uh, unity of the Famagusta people, for example, through um, Ayos Yorgos Xerinos uh, church um, rep repurposing. Um, so much has been done uh, that I, 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 don't, I, don't, I can't list all of them uh, or, or leave out some of them. I just want to make the point that together is where our power stands um, and what moving forward i need to emphasize for the youth for the civil society we have to have always the future in our focus we, because throughout our daily lives through education um, and through politics we are always reminded of the past at every opportunity what we need to focus on is the future. While taking lessons from the past, we, we look towards the future and keep that focus always on because they at every opportunity we will be reminded of the past and that's not that does not get us anywhere. Thank you very much, Kulusi. Uh, Evgenia, what is your message? By hearing all these stories, I think that every story adds to the collective success, if I can say that. But if I were to share something that uh, I experienced, it might be insignificant, but I remember before um, we organized our first conference for Elkoi, we went to the Lidra Palace the day before. And I think it was one of the first times that I was visiting Lidra Palace and I only heard about it from stories that my grandfather knew because he was working there as a as a kid yeah before like uh, the 60s so um i remember we went to the room to set it up to put chairs to open some windows and the windows had locks there and uh, i remember the peacekeepers could not find the the key to open the lock and the reason why was because they were probably they were probably there since the 1960s. So in order to organize a conference, we made them break the locks so that we have windows and doors open for the young people to enter the rooms. So I think to me, like um, it it stayed in in my mind as like something very symbolic that because we wanted to hold a conference to bring young people together. Um, we broke, let's say, a lock that opened the door, as symbolic as that might sound. Um, uh, when it comes to like other successes, like from from Elkoi, like we we managed to get um, references and recognition by the UN Secretary General in some of his reports about the initiatives. Um, there was also an article leaked um by Mr. Christ, uh, by sorry um by Politis newspaper about Mr. Christopher Levy's uh, measures uh, for confidence building and we saw that some of our ideas were referred in that article i mean it was not something official but um still um i would say um we can see like some efforts in terms of advocacy at least reaching out to, to the ears and, and eyes of uh, the decision makers so I, I know that these might sound insignificant but um, there are some small successes um, for us thank you very much and to all of this amazing um, shares uh, I would like to Add that um, from, from the northern part side of the Cyprus, um, I had been involved in uh, peace activism as very young as well. In 2003, I was, I was eight years old, um, remembering my steps on the strikes with my parents. 
And um, throughout that journey, I always wanted, I always felt like I have to be involved. And by being involved in a process that most of the people who were silent was you mostly feel awkward because nobody talks. Nobody, like the, the ones who talk are the marginalists, but the ones that who wants to get involved are the, the rebellious. So while I was like 15 years old, uh, this, this youth um, environment, the atmosphere wasn't as much as established as today. But what, what is most uh, mind blowing for me is in the last 10 years, um, the community of the community in the island um, has emerged and went beyond than Turkish and Greek Cypriot. And now that we are accepting many nations who do live and we, we are involving them our peace process to be able to see many other nations who are coming to the um, to the buffer zone and getting involved into the process of conflict resolution uh, was the turning point for, for me significantly last year. Because what happens then, you realize that over that room, you are not the inferior and there is some other person from so far away has come to the room who feels uncomfortable and you do have the understanding and empathy of another person that you always felt you are the inferior one. So once the seats change, then you have your, your horizon opens in a different perception. And that, that affected my, uh, my, my journey while being committed, staying in, in, in conflict resolution and working towards involving youth more in decision-making. Um, so overall, like the amazing um, success stories that Winds of Change, Hade, El Koi, like El Koi, I will say youth, um, youth decisions or thoughts were not taken, were not taken in particularly consideration before. And this wasn't demanded before as much as it's been demanding, demanded today. And being able to see our advisors' thoughts on paper and reflect it upon is also encouraging us to speak more because we were not given the opportunity yet enough to take them serious. And now that we do, then we, we pass our knowledge and expertise and involvement with a light to, to, add to, to our peers. It's not just that um, we are achieving, we are wanting to achieve and feel it all together because it's a sense of community achievement that's gonna bring us to the positive, um, po like positive piece, I would say for the moment. So yes, that's from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sadie. Uh, we exceeded the schedule uh, uh, the time frame. That means that we have a very lively and uh, an interesting discussion. So uh, it's time to conclude this inspiring session. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend uh, my sincere thanks uh, to all of the speakers for, for their valuable contributions. Evgenia, Andriano, Sarigen, Halusi, thank you very much. Uh, I think that your experiences, uh, your perspective have not only enriched um, our understanding about the peace building uh, process and the role of, of civil society, but also uh, let's say renew the sense of commitments uh, that we have to have towards the peace building efforts in, in Cyprus. So I think this is um, uh, uh, the, the, most, the most important. Uh, also, of course, I, I want to express my gratitude to all of the person that they joined today. Um, the part, your participation and interaction, I think, uh, is that what makes the events like this meaningful. Um, needless to, to thanks again uh, the UNFISIP for the, um, uh, for the support, uh, not only on this webinar, but also on the other um, initiatives of Emerge Project. Please keep an eye for our upcoming Emerge activities, including webinars, workshops, community engagement uh, opportunities. Uh, you can find all of the information and stay updated. Uh, on, on our website. So I encourage you to visit our website and follow the, our social media and platform, either on Cartet, either on the Emerge uh, project. project. Um, 
So ah, I I think that someone raised a hand. Hi to everyone. Hi, Aria. Hi. Uh, it was uh, a nice talk, and I'm really enjoying the talk we had today, even if I didn't per participate a lot. But I was listening whole the whole time all you're saying and all your successes, and at the same time the motivation you gave me. At the same, I mean, at the same time I was like, okay, there is a will, there is a way, and all of you just showed me how much you care about this country. And at the end of the day, what we have to think is that it's our country and our future. So. For me, having people like this with successes and experiences and all of this will to have something new in this country and have peace in this country, for me, thanks a lot. It means a lot to be in this session with you. Evinia, I know you personally, and Sadige, um, I saw you yesterday at the United Nations and I can tell you really talked very well. And thank you also for that. Evgenia as well, you're amazing, you know that. And thank you for encouraging and being here at this session. And at the same time, I want to talk to myself. Like personally, I'm 24 years old and I really enjoy seeing people coming in and in and having new ideas and new perspectives and helping the society being better. Because um, if we're talking about personal ideally personally way um i believe we have to work as a community um i can see people because i am in the youth diplomacy as well i'm part of the like a member of the youth diplomacy as well i see year by year this organization extends more and more and more so the more we do the more we win so i i'm happy to be here and thank you for the invitation and thank you for talking with this way and I can't wait to have another session with you. Thank you very much, Aria. I think that was Thank the best closure of this webinar, um, <laughs> you know, to have these inspiring comments by uh, uh, by young people. So thank you for your comments. And looking forward to having you also in our uh, upcoming uh, events. I think that the message is clear. Together we can continue to learn uh, continue to grow and contribute to, to the vital uh, peace-building efforts uh, in our country. So exactly. thank you once again uh, for joining us today. Uh, thank you. Stay inspired and let's continue to work together for a better tomorrow, for a better fu uh, future. So uh, good evening to all of you and, and see you all in our upcoming uh, events.